When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deep. Good evening everyone, it's good to have you with us for our evening reflection. Uh, and welcome as always, whether you're from West Kilbride, Sea Mill, uh, Port and Cross, whether you're down in the three towns up in Largs, Skelmerley, uh, wherever you're joining us from, whether around the Scotland, all around the world, uh, lovely to have you with us for our evening reflection tonight. Our focus tonight is all about identity and thinking very much about God's identity, because we serve a God whose name 
is love. So our focus tonight is from 1 John, 1 John chapter 4 and verses 7 through to 21, which I'll just read in a moment or two. But before we do that, let's just quieten ourselves before the Lord and then let's pray. Lord God, we are grateful that Sunday evening by Sunday evening that we can come together, that we can seek after you, the eternal and everlasting God, and that we can focus upon eternal things to set us up for another week ahead. So often, Lord God, we can be uh, running about, letting our thoughts run away with us and not even thinking about you. But we thank you for this time when we can settle upon you and give you the praise and the adoration that you alone are due. Lord God, we thank you that tonight we'll be focusing that you are a God whose name is love. You are love itself. And Lord God, our world needs love at this time. And we pray that as you are love, that we in response would be people of love who want to share your love with those around us. So Father, meet with us tonight in this time together. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our reading is from First Peter, First Peter chapter 4, and we're going to read uh, from verse 7 through to 21. It's entitled in the NIV, God's Love and Ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and he is in us. He's given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen. God will bless his reading from his holy word. Over this past year, when things have so changed in our world, a lot of people have been thinking about identity and destiny. They've been thinking about, you know, who, who am I in this world? When, when jobs are taken away because people have been furloughed or perhaps lost their jobs, they end up asking those big questions of life. Who am I? What am I here for? What is my identity? 
And in this passage this evening, what we see is that God shows what his identity is. He reveals one of his names to us, that God is love. Twice in that passage, John makes it clear that God is love. Verse 8 and then in verse 16. That is who God is in his character. He is love. And it's not as if God just says, you know, I am love and then doesn't do anything about it. God demonstrates his love. How does he demonstrate his love? By sending his son, Jesus. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And it says in verse 10, this is love. So God is love and this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So God demonstrates that he is love. How does he do that? By showing love in the Lord Jesus, the one who paid the price for our sin, who was an atoning sacrifice on the cross, a propitiation on the cross, that we might be forgiven and that we might come into the presence of God. Now note here, that that love is not something that is necessarily natural to us. It says in this passage here that it's not that we love God first, but rather God loved us first. And if we are made in the image of God, then we are called to be people of love, to love other people in a radical way. That's how people know that we belong to God and how we know what our identity is. You see, in this world where people are searching for identity, if your identity is in God, is in Christ, then as God is love, we too are to be people of love. And not just to say that we're, you know, a Christian and that we're people of love. We are to demonstrate God's love. We are to demonstrate that God has really touched us in our lives. We're to demonstrate that God has made a huge difference in our lives. We're to demonstrate that God has, you know, really shown his love in the Lord Jesus. And therefore, our lives are completely changed. What does it say in verse 19? We love because he first loved us. Because God is love and he's first loved us, we also are to be people of love. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. And therefore, in the last verse there, we have a commission, don't we? He's given us this command, a commission, a command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. In the same way that God is a God of love, Jesus came to demonstrate that love. We are to be people who demonstrate love. And when we demonstrate love to our brother and to our sister, as we love even our enemies, then we're witnessing to a God of love. A God who loved the world so much, he sent his only son into the world to pay for our sin. And so I want to encourage you tonight. If you're struggling with identity issues, where's my life going? What am I doing with my life? If you believe and trust in God, your identity is one of love. As God is love and God shows his love, so we too are to be loving if we belong to God. That is our calling placed upon our life, to love other people, that they too might experience the love of God, that they too might put their faith and trust in him. As we think over these thoughts uh, this evening, uh, let's join together in the prayer that's been prepared for us for tonight. God, whose name is love, we see your love revealed in the giving of your son. May we embrace the offer of your love and live in response to your generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose name is love, we see your love revealed 
in the one who shares in our humanity and who suffers on our behalf. May we live as those who share a common humanity and in the suffering of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose name is love, we see your love revealed in the community of your people and in all who are made in your image. May we share in the life of your people and recognize your image in the life of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose name is love, we see your love revealed among us in the places where love is known and fear is cast out. May fear be cast out and love be known in the community we share and in the spaces we shape. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, whose name is love, we see your love revealed among us in the resurrection of your Son and in the promise of your Spirit. May we live as those who share in the hope of the resurrection and in the life of your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
Now, as always, a big thank you for joining with us for this evening and for this evening's for reflection. Uh, reflections are going to continue in the evenings for the foreseeable future online. Um, but please do remember that on Sunday the 9th of May, so next Sunday, uh, the church building will be reopening here in West Kilbride. Um, we still have to put social distancing measures in place. Uh, masks still must be uh, worn as well. Um, and we are limited in number. Um, and so you will need to book your place if you want to come to a church service. And uh, we're going to be running two services on a Sunday. Uh, the half past ten service. Um, and uh, that's just for, for anyone. Uh, our normal uh, half past ten uh, morning service. And we're also going to be running a four o'clock service. Uh, which we're calling our church family service. Now it is aimed at families, but um, it's anyone in the church family. So if you like it a wee bit more lively and we can't sing at the moment, uh, which is a frustration to many, I realise, within the church. But we can do action songs. Uh, we can do some, some games as well. And we can have a thought uh, about uh, the Bible and we can uh, do Bible readings and other things as well. And it's a, an opportunity for the church family to, to come together. So Please don't let that put you off. If you want to come to the church family gathering, then please come book your place uh, for four o'clock. Now, if you do want to book your place, all the information is in the latest church email that I've sent out. It's available on our website, wkpc.church. So please uh, do look at the booking details and I look forward uh, to seeing you in person soon. Uh, please be also aware that uh, we are continuing to, to stream our morning service on a Sunday. We do it live uh, from the church with a few wee teething difficulties um, just last uh, Sunday, but hopefully those will be remedied uh, for the 9th of May. So if you're not quite ready to come back to church yet, uh, please don't worry. It will be streamed in all the usual places um, just as normal. So again, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, let's just finish with a word of blessing. And now go in peace, go in joy, go in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.